and put those hands together tonight. We're going to give God great praise and great glory as we magnify him tonight. Let's just praise the Lord. Come on, choir. Let's sing this song together. Come on, put those hands together. If you know you have a change and there's been a change in your life, listen at this. I feel a change, a change in my life. I've got a new wall to walk just like Christ. He gave me joy, turn my life around. I thank God for changing my life. Well, I feel a change. I feel a change.
Hallelujah. Just want to praise you just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to thank you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. and glory and honor they all they all belong to you thank you Jesus for blessing me I just want to thank you forever and ever Glory, we give you honor. It 
Amen. I, I just want to, I, like I said, I had a few preliminaries. Perhaps I can do it at benediction. But I just want to share with you um, what the Lord has given me for tonight. Amen. Nothing new. Nothing new. Amen. But how many know every now and then a reminder? Can, it's something you heard before. Something you already knew, but just hearing it again. Now, I'm not talking about the sermon. I'm talking about what God is saying. That, that hearing it again gives you the boost of faith that you need. Now, you know, and I'm going to tell you something else I thank God for. We didn't come in here talking about 2023 is going to be the year for me. I got victory in 2020, whatever. This is not a rhyming game. Y'all quiet now. It's not a rhyming game. It's not a witchcraft game. We're talking about a man got to be the first one to come in your door tonight so you can have good luck. Cook that pot of black eyed peas. And if y'all still stirring all that kind of stuff, you better go somewhere and get delivered. Because the, every year you did that, you had trouble. The year, and I, I don't mean to make like the year your family members passed. Did you remember your pot of beans? Hmm? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Amen. When, when, when things go, when you had your moments, Lord, I don't know if we're going to make it or not. Did you remember? Because it, we don't depend on luck. We depend on Jesus. I don't hear nobody saying amen. Now, you want to cook me a pot of beans, put some rice with it, and let's eat. <laughs> Even that superstition crap, I mean nonsense. Come on, you too mature in Christ. Y'all, look how quiet it got in here. Quiet, it, well, it's only the truth. And I just want you to reference every year you did that and when things went wrong, that pot of beans and that man coming into you, being the first one to cross your threshold, all of that was supposed to prevent that, remember? This was taking me into the new year. This was taking me into anything that God has for me. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. Somebody already know where we're going. You should. Jeremiah, chapter 29. I'm going to begin reading at verse 10. Because there's something there you need to see. Jeremiah 29 and 10, reading from the new, uh, what is this? New King James Version. And I just picked up what I had here. And verse 10 says, can I begin to read? I'm, I'm sorry. We honor Pastor Audrey. Let's thank God. I'm so sorry. I, I, I mean, all protocol just went out. But thank the Lord. We honor our pastor. And let's thank God for her for another 12 months of awesome work before the, for the Lord. Come on, Holy Temple. For another 12 months of awesome leadership. I look at the different things that Holy Temple have done this year. It is just awesome. And I think Bishop Williams will be proud to see that what the seeds that she sowed into generations, the gospel that she preached, the Tuesday nights that she taught, come on somebody, that the seeds are sprouting up. And we give God glory for that. I want to thank those who joined me on this week. Uh, for our um, virtual meeting and we're just looking forward to God doing some great things we have some great news we're going to share with you probably tomorrow is Holy Temple having service? okay possibly tomorrow or I know within the upcoming uh, future Jeremiah 29 and to all of the elders and, and those who are here in, in, in their absence we still acknowledge them and those of you that are here tonight you're here because where else would we be Think about what's the difference in us coming to church tonight and being in church tomorrow than when I had to preach in Slaughter Neck. When I had to preach in York, Pennsylvania. I could I go back to another generation when Bishop Williams had to preach in Fanwood. And you come back and the sun is coming up. They'll know that holy temple. <laughs> Amen. 
But let me tell you, this is no different than if we had to preach out tonight and be in church on tomorrow. There's no difference. Amen. Jeremiah 29 and 10. And the word of God says, for thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you. Let me, before I continue, we have to face the fact that there are things you will have to go through. But God is letting you know it's only for a time frame. I, I, I'm just trying to talk to faces and not top of heads. But everything that you have to deal with and go through, that's why I thank God for the opportunity as we were led by the Spirit to lay hands on those who came forward. But everything that you have dealt with this year, I'm not one of those fake prophets that's going to tell you all your trouble's gone. That, that, then you must be ready to go to heaven. Amen. Because uh, man is a few days, the scripture teaches us. And those days are full of trouble. And how many days we count? 365? Lord, can I have some days without you? Can I have 364 and a half days without trouble? But he says, after 70 years are completed, Stop looking at what you're in as the rest of your life and look for the completion of what God is doing. Because when he says after 70 years, are, now I know we're on the eve of a new year, but if you are really following God's calendar, you've been in your new year for a few months. Pastor has already sp spelt that out for us. You have already been in your new year, God's year, for separate, for three months now? For three months. So is that why our years get jacked up? Because we're still letting our lives be ordered by what man has established instead of what God has already established? We cannot put faith in man's system. We have to put faith in what God has already foreordained. <sighs> I only have a few minutes to do this. So after 70 years are completed, not only must the time expire to be completed, but the work that God wants to perform within the time must be completed. So if he told, is, if he told the prophet about their captivity in Babylon, that you're going to be in Babylon for 70 years, well, that's not where you and I are at. We are only about uh, about 40 minutes, excuse me, 20 minutes from the calendar change in the 2023. So, Lord, you gave us 12 months, 365 days. We're not going to count all the hours and the minutes, but, Lord, you gave us all that time to do something within us. And if you are still breathing, if you are here tonight in your right mind, Listen, even if you're here with a determination, it's quiet, it's quiet. Even if you are only here, I don't have much, I don't want to tell my testimony. Some of you got right to the end of the year and it looked like the enemy wanted to take your life, drive you out of your right mind, disturb your peace, try to afflict that which was yours. No matter what it is that you have been through, look at where you are right now. I just want, I don't know, 12 people just high-five somebody else and say, the time is complete. You have to believe in a completed work. You, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Holy Temple, did you? Do y'all talk back? Or do you, you have to understand that it's completed. I know you don't see it, but it's completed. <laughs> you may not have it in your hand, but it's completed. You're, you think you're waiting to give a testimony when God is saying it's all. Ready. 
So he says, so he says, for thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you. Now watch, because this, y'all put me up too late every time. Y'all put me up too late every time. But here's what I want you to understand. When he says, I will visit you, what is it? It's, it's, it's worth my going through if it's going to bring God. See, now watch it, watch it. Not just in your situation, but it's going to bring God to you. Which means I have a greater knowledge of who he is. I have a greater understanding of I don't need God to fix everything I'm going through. Because I do want to have something to brag on about what God can do. But I do want to know God better. I do want to know him for myself. Look at somebody say, y'all got to bring it down just a little. Just bring, just tell somebody say, it just makes sense to me. Tell, tell them it just makes a whole lot of sense to me. I don't just want God to fix it. I don't just want God to turn it around. I want to know God. I want, see, I'm tired of God coming to my situation and taking care of that. And I still wondering, am, am I in a better place? But nothing has to change around me as long as God can change something about me. Oh, y'all not saying nothing right now. And see, that's part of the problem. People are looking at you for who you used to be and what they heard about you. And they wondering, how do you still shouting and singing and jumping and running? It's all because instead of me looking at the situation and saying, God, rebuke the devour for my sake, he's going to do that anyway. If I do what he said in his word, he, there are things I don't have to pray for. I think y'all just missed that. If I do things that God has already said in his word, there are too many things I can take off my prayer list because it's already in his hand to do. Action A, but why are you praying for some of the things you're praying for? Pray for the things you don't understand. Pray for the things that aren't manifested yet. But some of that other stuff, stop praying against your enemy. Y'all don't watch Living Devotions. Stop praying against it. Y'all don't watch Living Devotions. That must be some other preacher on. But stop praying against it. And start saying, God, do something in me. I want to come out better. We would not have the testimony of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego if they never had to go through the fiery furnace. But you know the test. Because they went through, you have the testimony. But the testimony is not really about the fire. The testimony is all about they were kept. See, now y'all y'all don't get it. Stop highlighting and making noise about the situation and look at the greatest miracle of all. People don't know you don't have anything because they see you still blessing God. People don't know you're battling depression because they still see you giving God glory. Because if I stop doing that, I would snap and lose my mind. I just want to talk to about 10 people that know one of your biggest problems is the thing of keep stepping out of grace, trying to find acceptance and love and peace and significance through everything that's not of God. Uh, y'all. Can I just only preach verse 10? Because I haven't got any further. He says, I will visit you. Now I'm reading New King James. He said, I will visit you and perform. <laughs> so, so you, you've been stuck in Psalm 23. 
all your Christian life waiting on God to take you through the valley of the shadow of death, not just so you can rejoice, just so that you can see him prepare the table because you still worrying about your enemies. Is there anyone that know the church should mature beyond that now? This is not about look at your neighbor and say, you don't have to like me, God. This is not that. That is not even scriptural. Because we're supposed to pray for one another. We're supposed to bear the infirmities of the weak. Strengthen the bad. Those are all scripture. And it's referring to people of God. But he says, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you. Whatever he has said about you, God said, I have a time when I'm going to do it in your face. There's a time I'm going to do it right in your presence. But this time you got to wipe the tears out of your eyes now. You have to start lifting your head and looking up now. You have to start squaring your shoulders now because I'm on my way to your dress. So, so what did you just say, uh, Bishop? What I just told you was, you don't need a man to come to your front door tonight to wish good luck on you. You need to say, Jesus, I can't wait to get home tonight. Because you said you're going to visit me. Y'all, and y'all still sitting there. I will visit you and perform my good, what time is it? I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and cause you to return to this land, uh, to this place. I will cause you to return to the place of your blessing. I will cause you to return to the place where you are to be fruitful. I will cause you to return to the place that I've already promised for you. I will cause you, I will cause you, I will cause you. You don't even know how you're gonna get there. All you know is you're gonna look up and you arrive. Tell somebody, I, all I know is one day I was sick and the next day I was whole. Okay, y'all quiet, y'all quiet. One day I was without and the next day I had everything I needed. One day I was all alone and being lonely and the next day I had all the comfort I could reach out for. Uh-huh. The things that God can do when the time is up. And when the time is right, all you need to do is set your watch according to his word. Set your spiritual watch according to the testimonies of victory that you hear. Set your watch to whatever notes you might be writing right now. Whatever you might be processing right now. Set your watch and your calendar to it. And, and I just believe God, listen, if, if for Israel it was 70 years, Lord, what will you do for me in 70 days? No, no, somebody just lost that. You just miss that because God, if it took them years and I'm in a new era and a new dispensation, I'm in the era of the Holy Ghost, then that means everything that you prophesied must live. I must live to see it fulfilled. So he said, I want to stay in verse 10, but... Y'all think all the juice is right there in verse 11. But verse 11 says, God says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now, the, I believe it's the New Living Translation, says, For I know the plans. I know the plans. That's why... God wants you to stop trying to figure it out because he already has a plan. Oh, come on, just touch somebody. Uh, okay, y'all got tired of me that quick? Just tell somebody God has a plan and, and I need to stop interfering. I, I don't know his plan. I don't understand his plan, but I'm not going to get in the way of his plan. Okay, I need all those that were shouting so hard not too long ago. 
to lay something. Let's get ready. I want to talk. I want to leave you with this little thought. I guess you said, I thought I already had the topic. I'm going to leave you with, well, if you got it, that, that's it. But for someone that just don't know where we're at, just, just look at somebody and, and say, neighbor, everything is going according to plan. Tell somebody else, say, everything is going according to plan. All you see is a deadline. Okay. Now, I'm talking to the real people that are going into 2023 and have some dilemmas and have some uncertainties. But I'm here to tell you at the last day in the last hour of 2022, everything. It's going according to plan. You don't know what God can do unless something go wrong. You don't know what God is able to do unless you don't know what to do next. Everything. Prophesy to 12 people. Tell, point your finger and prophesy to us. Wake somebody up and say, let's get back to the old holy temple. Say, everything is going according to plan everything every setback every day without every night you had to cry and pace the floor every time you had to scratch your head and say god why or say y'all still not talking back or say god when and, I'm, and I got the anointed gall to tell you that all of that is all a part of the plan. Because the thing is this, no matter how much despair you felt yourself in, look who did not give up. You know, I, I really don't have to have, all, you know, it's like a comedian now. I say something in the punch. <laughs> we, we can wait. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm trying to rush on through here. But you need to understand right now, I can no longer do what I did. I can no longer be who I was because the plan that God has for me is going to radically change everything I know about myself. Get ready for the unrecognizable anointing. Get ready for the unre... Lord, I wish I could tell people just start leaping for joy like you're going crazy because I'm expecting something that I don't even know if I can handle. I'm expecting something that I can't even begin to tell you how God is going to do it. clock is against me. There's no way I can get into this. I I'm trying to find my way to an easy way out of this. I'm trying to find my way. Uh, what can I skip to? Just, okay. Okay. Uh, well, you know, we came up at midnight, we prayed, and we came around the altar, and we had family praying, all of that stuff. And, and then as the years progressed, we shouted into the new year. Or I, I just modulated to my next key while preaching into the new year. You know, I, and I'm trying to, because uh, as I get older, I'm trying to do things differently. Um, but uh, I am in such expectation. <laughs> I am in such expectation because the Lord has already taken my life from September to today and I've just blown my mind the favor of God the power of God the blessings of God I'm talking about stuff I, you know when the Lord is blessing you when you don't ask and it's done when you're not out here begging and it gets done when you're not looking for it and it shows up. Lord, I wish I had some people right there. And that's how you know. 
I wish I could tell you 2023 going to be trouble free. But the preachers that tell you that are lying. I'm going to tell you the truth. As long as you don't tithe, you're going to have battle. As long as you keep giving into your flesh, you're going to have issues. But the moment you stand and square your shoulders and set your face as flint and say, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. We're the no separation generation. Where's the I won't let it separate me generation? Where is the I won't let it separate me generation? I'm not letting my family separate me. I'm not letting my friends separate me. My BFF separate me. trying to see what I want to do is go ahead and do something at midnight and pick this back up at 12 at 1210 Ecclesiastes 7 and 8 says the end of a thing see I'm like I'm, unlike these other preachers they try to preach read everything that they prepare I'm already at the end of the notes <laughs> Ecclesiastes 7 and 8, the end of a thing is better than its beginning. Watch. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. So there are some things, and I know you're getting tired of it, but there's some things you just got to wait for. It's Why do I have to wait for it? You're not waiting for God to make it. You're waiting for the right time where God gets all the glory. Okay, y'all just missed that. Do you want it so bad that God doesn't get the glory? Because God wants to do it for you and give it to you so bad. But he has to do it at a time in your life when you are spiritually mature to say, God, if it had not been for you. If it wasn't for the Lord, oh my God. Are you ready for God to really rock your world with that testimony and you spend the rest of your life testifying and giving God the glory about what he did when you didn't even believe it yourself. So as we, as the clock, clock has just struck 12, just remember this, that the end of a thing What did you just miss? Look at your neighbor and say, honey, it's over. You got diagnosed. You got misdiagnosed the first time in 2022. Then you were diagnosed with something else in 2022. I believe God works in threes. That's two. The third report is we can't find anything. to testify in a few months I'm talking to you how do you want to testify you already gave us a deadline you said by this month I have to do this and that how do you want to testify what I said my question to you is how do you want to testify because do I stand as a standard testimony do I just go off and people just got to figure this out? Because what God is specializing in right now is mystifying people's thoughts. is stupefying the expectation of the normal. Do me a favor. Because we are officially in the new year, give yourself 12, 20, 22, 23, 23. I would say 23 minutes. We can shout that long. Well, some of us can. Some of y'all come out the gate too hard. But you have to know how to shout and breathe. Shout and pace. Shout and recalibrate. 
and get back in the flow. But I just want you to pause for a minute because when somebody asks you, what did you do? You, I know you dad say, no, honey, I was, this is my bishop. He wouldn't shut up. But I want you to give yourself 12 minutes, just 12 seconds, 12 minutes, and give God some New Year's praise. Come on. Come on, give a New Year's praise. You better praise him. I don't know if that's Jordan or J-Ron, but you better praise him.